In this video, we're talking all about the D23 Ultimate Fan Experience. <laughs> it's no longer the Expo, but there were some news that dropped, actually quite a bit of news dropped today about this uh, event coming in August. We're going to talk about it, break it down. I got the Italiano. I got Mr. Michael Ebba with me today to talk shop on OG Itty Bitty Five. Welcome aboard, everybody, to another episode of OG55. I am joined by these two fantastic, sexy gentlemen. We got the Italiano. We got Mr. Ebba. Mr. Ebba, I will start with you today. If you could let everybody at home know where they can find you on social media, sir. Of course, OG. And again, thank you so much for having me on, as always. And you lovely folks at home, can you can find me on Instagram, Michael Ebba. Also, Twitter slash X at Michael Ebba 1991. And you can also find me here on OG55 all the time with these beautiful, beautiful gentlemen. Come on, guys. Give it up for them. Let's go. Yeah, let's rock. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Eva. And right over here, we got George, the Italiano, the Joe Pesci of Diz YouTube. George, if you could let everybody at home know where they can find you on social media, sir. Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You could also find me on Instagram under the Disney Italiano. And of course, you'll find me here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. There it is. There it is. Let's talk some D23. Here we go. We got we got <laughs> we got some news today. This is from the official Walt Disney Company website from today. Details revealed for D23, the ultimate Disney fan event. Okay, now this spans Friday, August 9th, Saturday, August 10th, and Sunday, August 11th. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll start off with the highlights of what's new, and we'll kind of break this down. So D23 Day at Disneyland Resort will be Thursday, August 8th. So that's interesting. D23 day. Now, did they announce, is this going to be like a, a, a like a, a celebration for everyone? Mm -hmm. Or is this an after dark kind of upcharge thing, George? So what they did was they first made this announcement. They didn't really give too much into what it was supposed to be, but they announced this at Destination D23 when they made the official announcement that, uh, that uh, the D23 was no longer the expo. It was going to just be the ultimate disney fan event it was going to be held in california in august tickets on sale march 26 all that good jazz and they announced that they were going to do sort of kind of a um d23 pre-game party that leads up to the fan event and it's going to be held none other than disneyland you know what a what a great way to kick off a party than to have it at the happiest place on earth and uh i actually thought this was going to be a separate uh, hard ticket D23 event, to be honest with you. But it turns out today with all the information that dropped that basically if you uh, if you have a park ticket, a valid park ticket, you have a valid uh, reservation for that day, whether um, you're just a, a avid park goer or if you're a D23 attendee, that anyone can join in the festivities. They're just going to have a bunch of stuff just kind of like pop up all around Disneyland, and I believe they said also at uh, Disney California Adventure as well. Yeah, and well, it's even saying on here, D23 Day at Angel Stadium on Sunday, August 4th. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's interesting. So it's almost like D23 is taking over like this whole week, like all around the, the resort area pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as far as now with the, with the, uh, the Angel Stadium event, you do have to purchase a ticket, which is basically – uh, the price of a game ticket that you're actually going to watch an actual baseball game at the Angel Stadium. But they, I think they are incorporating for people who do purchase it under their D23 membership. They'll have like, again, little like pop-up things that they'll incorporate D23. And I think uh, everyone who does join that event, they're giving away, um, it looks like a uh, collectible of Mickey dressed up in a baseball uniform, okay. uh, which I thought was kind of cool. That's you know. cute. Yeah, yeah. that's cute. I, I'm not really, you know, I'm, I, I wasn't really into the notion of going to the Angel Stadium. I thought, like, if it was just like a, 
like a, a meetup with D23 fans, then they're just kind of using the spot. But to actually just go there and watch a typical baseball game, it's like, eh, you know, I could do that anytime. But the, uh, the D23 day at Disneyland um, on August 8th, I'm definitely interested in. I'll definitely be attending because I'll be there for that week. And even better that there's not an extra upcharge. <laughs> <laughs> so. Right, exactly, man. I, you know, you know me. I'm a big sports guy. I mean, I was just, I was just at the Angel Stadium. Uh, well, when was that? February 31st, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. I thought I saw you. I thought I saw you there with your special access. Oh yeah, all the time, bro. <laughs> all the time, dude. My gold, my golden boy gave that to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> gotta get, gotta get that free hot dog. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, absolutely. But um, <laughs> but here, okay. So so this it gets interesting here. This is this is I have a lot of questions, and George, you might be able to help me out with this. Yes, absolutely. Th three nights of marquee showcases at the Honda Center. So now we got the Honda Center involved, right? Mm -hmm. Disney Entertainment Showcase, which is gonna be Friday, August 9th. We have Disney Experiences Showcase, which, which I want to touch upon this. And then Disney Legends Ceremony, which also I want to touch upon this. Because mm -hmm. I've been critical of the Legends inductees in years past. But we'll talk about to. that. Right? So I want to ask you, because the Entertainment Showcase, I, I don't know. They might have some sort of like Broadway mm -hmm. production or something they might do, right? Right. But what really caught my eye, though, is the Experiences Showcase. So do they mean that this is going to be... Like like the event where like Demaro gets on there and mm -hmm. he announced yes so that's so, what this is going to be at the Honda Center is, is Demar like the announcement yes, yes. so wow yeah so this actually confirmed everything that we were speculating which I thought was kind of interesting because I'm going to go back to the day one with the entertainment showcase before when it was held at the Anaheim Convention Center it wasn't titled as showcase they were just titled as either presentations or panels now with the entertainment showcase they basically combined everything that they would hold at the anaheim convention center into one for instance they had the animation panel they had the live action panel but they were two separate uh panels that they would be on different days at different times they right. are combining them into one showcase and then they're also incorporating the disney broadway into that as well, where that that would be a separate uh, presentation at the uh, the Anaheim Convention Center as well. So the fact that they're in, they're incorporating all of these, that they, I believe that the first two nights is they're going to start it at seven p.m., but the Legend Ceremony is going to be at five p.m. This possibly might be a good couple hour a good couple hours per show because if they're going to incorporate especially with the entertainment if they're going to incorporate animation live action and broadway all into one show yeah that's it's going to be a pretty lengthy show that's going to be lengthy and you're right though and you've been saying this a lot george you get tomorrow on that stage at the honda center the freaking honda center you better come with some stuff. He's going to have to come with some stuff. So the fact that they are incorporating and, and experiences is going to cover basically um, parks, consumer products, um, anything beyond the parks as far as like the cruise line goes. Um, they definitely confirmed that he's going to uh, touch upon in, in the gaming world with the, um, with the, uh, the collaboration with Epic games, he'll probably touch upon, but particularly when, with when, when diving into the, uh, the parks. Yeah. You put him on, <laughs> this isn't, you're going from a 7,000 seat, uh, area inside the Anaheim convention center to now a 15,000 seat park wow. for the Honda center. You're adding an additional 8,000 people into that venue <laughs> and you it was a, and it was a packed house inside the Anaheim convention center. So if you're adding an extra 8,000 seats, I guarantee you as much as, you know, I sometimes tomorrow just gets under my skin in the notion, not as a person, but just how he handles things. There's no way I cannot even see him stepping on stage with his brand new clean Nikes <laughs> And literally stand there in front of fifteen thousand diehard Disney fans, 
and not give and not deliver what we want to hear for yeah. this whole and, entire time. And, yeah, and to be fair to tomorrow, I think he will because, and I'm getting more and more confident that he will because we just did a video yesterday about how they're they're prepping the staging area for some sort of big um, Animal Kingdom um, project, yeah. which is likely to be the Dino Land thing, right? Um, a massive staging area. I think it's like five acres or something. It's pretty significant, right? Um, and it's just stuff that I'm hearing. I can't really get into detail because I respect the source. and I don't want to get anyone in trouble. But from right. what I'm hearing, yes, there are things that are definitely in motion. You know what I'm saying? And I think this expo, I, I, park-wise, I think will probably be tomorrow's best. I'm yeah. putting it out. I think it it has the potential to be based on what we're seeing over there at Animal Kingdom, based on what I'm hearing from actually multiple sources that they're really going to ramp up the park stuff. It, and it's, and I I have to touch upon the goat here for a second. Um, that I know you'll touch upon this OG, and then uh, Mike, I definitely want to hear your thoughts on all this, absolutely. especially because you're like coming into this like completely blindly, <laughs> you know, of not living. So this, all this information at once, you know, could be kind of um, overwhelming, but I'm very curious to know, you know, your thoughts on it, but I have to talk about the goat or should I say two goats? Because what I find interesting with the, the Disney legend ceremony, and a lot of people could think that, okay, it's the Disney legend ceremony. It's not relevant to anything. It is actually kind of relevant to the Disney experiences, and here's yeah. why. Yeah, I'll, there I'll, are two. I'll, I'll highlight. I have actually yeah. a thing here, so it'll help you kind of make your point. Yeah. Okay, so this is the group of um, people that right now for this year for the Disney Legend Ceremony um, that were connected to the company that did major contribution to the champ uh, to the company in some odd shape or form, whether it was in front of the camera, behind the camera. Um, animation, writing, you know, what have you. But again, tons of great people. And OG, you'll touch upon, you know, your your sentiments on this group of uh, individuals. But I'm just going to just go to two of them. And one is in the upper right-hand corner and one is down in the lower center. James Cameron <laughs> and Joe Rohde. Now, I'm sorry, on this channel, we don't believe in coincidences. And... <laughs> It's to the notion that they are planning something big with Avatar at Disneyland. And they're kind of feeding us some information, but then taking it back, retracting it, going all around. We don't know what's, what's going on. But it just so happens, and I, I had made this prediction, and I said, man, would it be something if they surprised us fans, if they start talking about Avatar, and they bring Joe Rohde out on that stage. And lo and behold, this year, James Cameron and Joe Rohde, both Disney legends, under the same roof that they are going to discuss the, the Disney parks experiences. Come on, you guys. It's obvious. They're not bringing... <laughs> First of all, they've been teasing something really big for this Pandora Avatar thing at Disneyland Resort. Really big. OK, and then at the expo, you're going to conveniently bring out Joe Rohde and James Cameron for their Legends Awards, which they absolutely deserve. I mean, 100 percent. But but like they're there at, at the event already now because of the, their awards. There's I'm telling you, they're not <laughs> these people that think that they're going to that they're just going to put some exhibit in the launch bay. It's ridiculous. All signs are pointing to something massive. And now you have Joe Rohde there and you have James Cameron. You mean to tell me that on that parks panel that, that tomorrow is going to be hosting and talking about this, this avatar experience that these guys aren't going to be part of that. Come on. It, it, come on. You know, like, like you said, George, too many coincidences aren't a, aren't a coincidence, y you know, uh, something is afoot here. You know, what, what are your thoughts, Emma? Yeah. I mean, and here's the thing too. Um, this legends is actually after the experiences uh panel mm -hmm. right george correct so 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 think about that you you do the experiences first and then oh look joel Rody and james cameron avatar announcement for pandora and then the next day they're they they come on as legends now right so i think that's a perfect sequence of events right there and it, it makes total sense i mean this here is not a coincidence guys like at all like and, they're gonna no. bring them out and announce them and here's the thing too because we also have the next vote coming up for the uh, for disneyland ford next mm -hmm. month 
Right. You know, and that's another thing that that's why I think this will be Daddy Josh's best you know, um, events for D23 because now they will actually have stuff they can work off of and actually announce and green light stuff because now they know what they want to build. They know where they want to build it. Now they can announce all that juicy goodness at the event, man. All that juicy goodness, dude. <laughs> and, exactly. And, and honestly, and not saying that Joe Rody, Joe Rody absolutely deserves 100,000 oh, yeah. oh, yeah. to become a okay. Disney legend. But I mean, what a way to sweeten the pot. To get him on the phone and say, you know, uh, you know, we want to honor you as a Disney legend. Oh, by the way, we have this little avatar project we're considering <laughs> at Disneyland. Well, it, yeah, you're right. It's perfect. And look, Joe Rody is he's not a you know, he's not a spring chicken. You know, he's an older gentleman, but he's not elderly. You know what I'm saying? No. They could have given him this award in two years easily. You know, no problem. I mean, the Disney Legends thing, uh, sometimes it takes years and years for for people to get it. Um so the timing is very coincidental again that, that he's going to get it the year that we're going to get information on Disneyland Resorts Avatar experience. It, it, come on, you know. And yeah. then here's the thing too: we uh, we just talked about it in a video recently about Tiana's Bayou Adventure, how Bruce Vaughn came in, you know, halfway through that project. Well, Bruce Vaughn's a veteran; he's kind of like old school Imagineering a little bit. You know what I'm saying? He I, Bruce Vaughn's got clout. You know, I'm sure he could he can massage this and kind of get. Hey, come on, Joe. You know, can we get you back? Maybe we can get you back for just maybe just for the the Pandora project, you know, for for Disneyland or something. But can you come back for that? I wouldn't be surprised if he's connected to this thing at all. There, well, so many pieces are lined up. Go ahead, Eva. Well, yeah, exactly. And not only that, but I mean, um, not saying like that. James Cameron would probably say no, never. But I'm going to. I'm pretty sure James Cameron would be like, I want if I'm going to do Pandora. Over in Disneyland, I want to have the man Joe Rody himself. <laughs> Absolutely, right. because uh, if you watch the documentary, uh, the Imagineering story, which is on currently Disney Plus, you're welcome, Disney. Um, <laughs> that uh, oh, we got wait, you know, hold on, we got I got I got to let Iger know. You got to get uh, another. Um, you got to get some more special access. I got to get some more special access. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just I'll, another I'll one for the know. books. I'll let him know. I'll <laughs> yes. let him know. Um, that you know, they said you know. James Cameron and Joe Rody, they collaborated in harmony. Like they, they fed off of one another based off of their creativity and their vision. And they worked really well. And because of that, that work relationship, look what transpired into the world of Pandora at animal kingdom. You know, why would you want to tarnish that by possibly bringing in somebody who not saying they can't do a good job, but you know, why break that spark of magic between these two gentlemen that know the ways of how to approach right. a very intricate storyline, such as avatar into you, the parks. You guys bring up a fantastic point. It might've been a James Cameron mandate. If I'm doing a Pandora, whether it be in Anaheim, whether it be overseas, I want roadie. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. and Cameron is a heavy hitter. Like if Cameron makes the call to Rody, oh yeah, I mean, you know, he's gonna he's gonna say yeah. This is James freaking Cameron. You you know you're talking to here. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Um, and now, quick, oh, go ahead, go yeah, ahead. I was just gonna say before we get into um back to like more of the 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 D twenty three things while we're talking of the legends, right? Um, OG, I know you want to touch upon um just your overall thoughts on this because yeah. I mean we got. John Williams, Harrison Ford, Mark, Mark Hen. Like, I mean, these are like not small people. No. That, you know. and, and I've been, I've been really critical of the, the Disney legends awards in, in years past because it, it kind of turned into like the Disney Oscars in a lot of way, not, not to put down the Oscars or anything, but it's just like, you know, there were people that were like, just like, you know, stars in like Grey's Anatomy that were getting like a legend awards, you know, like when I think legend, I'm thinking like Rhodey, I'm thinking John Williams. I'm thinking like, you know, um, you know, uh, Frank Oz, right. You know, I'm thinking like the Sherman brothers, these are legends. You know, I don't, I don't, I, my idea of a legend is, is it's way up here. You know what I'm saying? So when you're telling me like the, the stars of Grey's Anatomy are getting legend awards, I'm like, okay, I'm not, yeah, putting, yeah. you know, they're, they're fine people. They're very talented, but it's like a legend though. Are you really serious? So this year it feels like for the first year in a long time though, where it's like, it's like, wow, you know, they have a really solid 
inductee list here, right? I mean, James, you know, James Brooks, James Cameron, Miley Cyrus, even you don't poo poo Miley Cyrus. I mean, Miley Cyrus was basically the Annette Funicello of a generation. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was huge for Disney. She, she brought in some bank during her time era on the Disney Channel with Hannah Montana. I mean, with the show, with the movie, her CDs, her right. concert, her sold out concert tour. I mean, it was. You know, it was a phenomenon, you know, and it was like, so to, you know, despite of how you feel about Miley Cyrus now, which, as I said, I don't really, I still actually enjoy her music. I think she's very entertaining. And it's like, but fun. of what she did for the company, absolutely. As And, and she would actually be the, the youngest Disney legend, um, I believe, that would be honored. Oh, and, and guys, and guys are looking, yeah, Harrison Ford. I love Harrison Ford. He's a, I love this guy so much, yeah. but it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like, OG, I agree with you. It's like, when you think of, cause, cause like before, right. About the legend stuff, um, you know, I would hear announcements about who was Disney legends, but I wasn't really following it, but the people I was, I was hearing, I was like, huh? I was like, what, what makes them a Disney legend? Right. Yeah, like to me, on. to me, a Disney legend is someone that was like heavily involved in the Disney and like they, they made great contributions to it. Right. So you know, they're like these great, you know, inspiring people. And this is a really good list, in my opinion. So when I saw this, I was like, George, we got to go to this one. <laughs> we got to yeah. go. And actually, one. believe it or not, I was one. Like, I was like, you know what? I'm skipping out on the Disney legends. You know, I'm, I'm as OG said, it's like, yeah, they were honoring like actors from Grey's Anatomy and from, you know, this and that. I'm like, uh, it's OK. But when they showed this roster. And with <laughs> with James Cameron, Joe Rohde, John Williams, Harrison Ford, Mark Henn, Frank Oz, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, Angela Bassett, um, Miley and, Cyrus, and for us, Steve Ditko is Marvel, which might be yes. interesting too. Because if you, if, I mean, you know, with the Parks connection, maybe there, yeah. right? With with yeah, the Avengers, you never know. You and never then know. and then James L. Brooks. I mean, come on, I'm I'm a huge Simpsons fan. I mean, he was with. Uh, Matt Groening from the very beginning of the Simpsons and like wow. look at him now, like almost 35 years later, the show is still growing strong. Yeah. It's wild. It's absolutely wild. So really good list, Disney really good list. I've been very critical of, of these in the past, you know, I think, I think they, this is a solid list. This, and this especially year. with some of them, um, not to like, as you had mentioned at OG over the phone that, you know, there's some of them, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're up there in age, you know? So, I mean, like it's best to honor, their accomplishments while they're still here and they can accept it and not wait till, you know, their time is up. And it's like, yeah, yeah you can honor them, but I think it would be a, a much better satisfaction to actually let them be able to accept that honor. Yeah. Satis satisfaction. I like that. I like that. That's a Georgia. That's yeah, a Georgia. Yeah, yes. absolutely. But like, not to get too morbid or anything, but like my heart drops every time I see anything, John Williams on my timeline, you know what I'm saying? The guy's mm -hmm. like 90, like, I think he's like in his mid nineties now or something. And yeah. I love that man, you know, but like, let's be honest, like reality is reality. And like, you know, the next expo is like in what, two years. It's yeah, like, every two years. let's, let's, let's celebrate him while, while we still have him around. You know what I'm saying? Um, even Harrison Ford isn't getting any younger. You know what I'm saying? He's in what, like his eight early eighties, mid eighties or something yeah. like that. I mean, it's like, yeah, I agree. I mean, I agree. It's like, we have to celebrate these fine folks when they're still around and, and we, they can enjoy it. So, um, okay. So yeah, so that's, that's interesting. Now we have an expanded shopping experience, which to be honest, the expo stuff is actually pretty solid because they do have some pretty unique merch at these expos. It's not mm -hmm. like the typical generic, like Disney store stuff. It's a lot of it. Like you can get like Imagineering stuff. You mm -hmm. can get stuff really like, you know, about that particular expo, which you'll never get again. Like I have pins from like the 2015 expo and stuff like that. That actually my mom got for me because I didn't go to that one, but she was like there, but like, but yeah, I mean, the, the shopping there is usually pretty good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so and I fun. also love how when you they bring in the third party vendors as well, where they have like a lot of bulk, like old vintage stuff that, you know, may be retired, you know, that you can't right. find anymore. So you could also take advantage of that as well. Absolutely. And then also last and final thing, the largest, most expansive show floor in D23 history at the mm -hmm. Anaheim Convention Center. Yes, uh, that show floor before was massive. I, I remember coming home from that expo in 2019 and my legs were killing me. That thing is yeah. massive. And this well, is be bigger than that. And here's the thing. And the reason why is because now that they are holding the bigger presentations over at the Honda Center, 
that alleviates more room up at the Anaheim Convention oh, Center. That's true. So now they get to stretch that out. And some of those um some of those uh extras as part of the ex uh the uh Again, I keep calling it Expo. <laughs> the show, the show floor is they're going to do a great big beautiful car show, which they are going to incorporate a lot of the automobiles that are going to be showcased that were part of uh, the uh, the Disney history. That's part of the Walt Disney Archives. Uh, so I'm I'm wondering. I didn't really go through like the whole entire description, but I mean from from my understanding, I mean how can you not have a car show without everyone's favorite love bug? Oh, you know, of course. He'll be there. Herbie. Herbie will be there, almost certainly, you know. Uh, yeah. that, that's, that's interesting. Actually, I like that idea, though. It's very interesting. You can do a lot with that. You know what I'm saying? You can yeah. add maybe some of the, um, you know, I don't know, like some of the vehicles from maybe like Marvel or something like that, you know, in there. I don't know. I don't know what they're – well, it's well, in the archives. I don't know. But that's interesting. I like that concept. That's brand new. We've never had that before, right? That's brand new. That's that's new just for this event. And I do believe the other – another part that's going to take up uh, the showroom floor is they just announced there's going to be a Lucasfilm um, kind of like a backdrop sort of thing with where they do show like a speeder. Now, I don't know if it's like going to be interactive or not, like where like the screen moves – and it makes it look like that you're moving in, in like a speeder or something, but well, yeah, they are that's actually, it's actually, it. um, it's actually, uh, what's it called? Stagecraft. And it's actually what they use. Stagecraft. Yeah, yeah. That was pretty dope. I saw that. That was actually the, the technology they use in shows like the Mandalorian. So a lot of the Mandalorian stuff is not filmed on location. It's in front of that big screen. So they're bringing mm -hmm. that to the expo. So you can sit there and actually experience it. I think that's freaking dope, man. And you want to talk about Instagrammable moments. I'm not like oh, an Instagrammable yeah. guy, but to be able to film videos and make it look like you're in that world, if you can get close to it like that, oh, man, that's something even as much as I'm not into like, you know, like the whole Instagram culture, I'm not. I have an Instagram. I don't really use it that much. But something like that where like we could like the OG crew can be in front of that big stagecraft, you know, a screen. It makes it look like we're in the world of Mando or something. Dude, I mean, that's that's brilliant concept. Now, this is something that George has been waiting for for a very long time. A very, yes. very long time. He, George has been stressing out over this for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. The day has finally arrived. Ticketing information. George, early thoughts yes. on this before we dive into the, into the details. So, yes, I was like cringing on pins and needles as to when they would announce this information and why it was taking so long. And in my head, I'm like, Cotton down the days. It's like, okay, it's not today. How about tomorrow? No, it's not tomorrow. And I told Mike over the phone, I said, it has to be the one week mark to the day when the tickets go on sale. And sure enough, that is today. Uh, uh, what What is today? I don't even know what today is. <laughs> March 19th. You're right. March 19th at the time of this recording um, that they announced the uh, the ticket prices, which I was very surprised of, of how simple simplistic it was i thought it was going to be overly complicated of uh, they were going to have to attach add-ons you know for the honda center you know or what have you but it's actually not that bad of pricing um as far as what we are willing to to pay for now you know there are <laughs> there are ticket values that go up to uh twenty six hundred dollars um which i think is just astronomically crazy if you think about it. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, right? Well, yeah. we have here the D23 Ultimate Fan Pass three-day ticket. That includes three-day assigned seat seating for event for evening shows at the Honda Center and three-day access to all experiences at the convention center, starting at $297 a ticket. Okay, that's, yeah. the, that's a three-day pass. Then we got the the then we had the 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 fan, the ultimate fan pass, the one-day ticket. Now it's gonna run you $99. Okay, then we have the uh, the preferred ultimate fan pass three day ticket, Jesus the super Christ. super special special ticket, and that's starting at nine hundred and ninety nine dollars. Yes, so, so that that basically covers you to attend the event, and then with the upcharges that goes up to just to say, like, um, so for the nine hundred ninety nine, that gives you the preferred seating, which is basically the center up front by the stage. You know, that's the preferred seating for all of the events. And then as far as the um, 
as far as the like depending on like where else you would want to sit in the tiers that's when the price goes up yeah that's wild and then we got the d20 fan pass which provides access only to the convention center because now we have this weird equation now where it's being held at multiple locations so some of these are only for the convention center. So the one day pass with gold members is $79 a ticket. General members, 89 three day pass for gold members is 209 and general members is 259. Now, a lot of fans are concerned about the transportation back and forth because yes. now, because the, the angel stadium isn't far, but it's not close either. Like it's not like from Disneyland to the Anaheim convention center where you can walk it. Uh, you mean the uh, Honda center? I mean, to the Honda Center, yeah. yeah. So from Disneyland Resort to the Honda Center, walking that would be insane, dude. Like, uh, you know, I would but, think, I would think that they would have some sort of complimentary transportation. Um, they might. especially because since they did confirm that these, this is going to be assigned seating. It, it might be complimentary transportation. Maybe Disney will use their bus services or something. Or it's possible if they don't. If you Ubered it, it wouldn't be the end of the world. That would be like a yeah. $6, $7 Uber probably. I mean, it's close enough where you're not going to pay a huge amount for an Uber, but it's too far to walk. You know, right. and it's kind of in that weird middle ground. But um, I don't know, man. I'm just telling you right now with this Parks thing, he, the, he's got – demorrow has got to bring this, man. He's got he, – he's in that yeah. stadium now. He's got to bring this. Oh, yeah. It's – it's everything is set up in his in his court, and he has to take that, that free – that free throw and it's yeah. like and he got it he got to hit that that hoop <laughs> well, I wanna, well i want to well, ask um do you think that bob Iger will be on the stage with him for this one uh, well for oh for the um, parks panel yes you know what maybe and i'll say why oh well i said maybe but well oh. here yeah i said maybe so we got it we got to go because <laughs> yeah. i'm death girl that drives you crazy but you're killing me alone Shout out to our friend Maybe. Um, here, do a little heart hands and heart. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. No, so, so okay, here's the thing. He, he might be there though, because here's the thing: if they're gonna do this Pandora thing for Disneyland, right? James Cameron is a heavy hitter. You know what I'm saying? This is a bit this is a big fish here. You know what I'm saying? If you remember. Iger came on stage for the announcement of Galaxy's Edge. We're not building one, we're building two, right? Yep. It's possible for a big announcement like that. Iger might be there like he was for Galaxy's Edge. So he might join tomorrow and maybe even Cameron and Joe Rody on that stage for that. Right. So it's possible. It's very, very possible. Well, but what do you think? That's, that's why I asked because of that reason. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that would I could be see it. him doing that because actually when Iger made that announcement for Galaxy's Edge, that wasn't even during the parks panel. That was, I believe, during the live action panel, the day before the parks panel even was was that. So he took that away from JPEG. Like he's like, he, he's like, you're not you're not having that moment. I'm having and that, that. And that's the thing with Bob Iger is he's very Hollywood. Yeah. He's not gonna miss that moment to be up there with James Cameron, bro. I'm telling you right now. Bob Iger will absolutely be there if they're if they're gonna announce something big for for Avatar. Yeah. So I mean, that's going to be interesting, but yeah, he's got to deliver, but I have a feeling that we're going to get some really good stuff here, man. I see we're seeing movement with animal kingdom. I'm hearing a lot of stuff for Disneyland resort. We've got Disneyland forward halfway approved. Now I'm even going to go even a little bit, one step further based off of that. They, it is now confirmed that they're holding the parks and experiences at the Honda center officially. They, they may announce what's beyond big thunder. They just might. They and especially with Bruce Vaughn at the helm as well with Imagineering. I think after the fact that he came in and not only came in and now he's taking the role as leadership over Barbara Boza, that was a complete game changer in itself. Yeah. What we'll say you, Eva? So uh, for Walt Disney World, um, of course, you know, the whole stuff with um, Animal Kingdom. But as for Disney, it's con concerned. Um, I think we'll, of course, hear about Pandora. I think we'll hear about the Avengers e-ticket. Um, I think that we will. I I um, I really think we'll hear about a third gate. Oh, that's bold, Eva. You think so, huh? Yeah, I think so. Yes. Okay, that's bold. Yeah. Well, look, a lot of uh, you know, like we, we like we, we reported here. Tom Corliss thinks that the end game, so to speak, um, for this whole Disneyland Forward initiative, 
is a third park. That's the end game for this whole thing is to to get the groundwork laid for that third park. And he said, that's what he, that's what he believes. And that's what he's been hearing as well from people in the know. Um, I, you know, they also, you know, they, they, they raised the, the height, the height limits, uh, or they want to yeah. raise the height limits to 300 feet at the resort for higher, like thematic elements and things like that. Well, you're not going to do that necessarily. And so you got some big plans, you know? Right, exactly. Because why? Because why else would you do that for? Right. Well, and why would you do? Why would you do it also for the Toy Story parking lot that's supposedly going to be Disney Springs West? Why do you need a 250, 300 foot tall thing over at a, at a shopping mall? That makes no sense. Maybe, uh, maybe you just want like a giant steakhouse. <laughs> exactly, dude. That'd be dope, dude. That'd be dope. You know what I'm saying? Just a big ass steakhouse, bro. It's like right? 300 feet, you know, just tall. Like just... <laughs> Let's go, man. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. We caught uh, we caught a, a, a steakhouse 300. There you go. Exactly. Exactly. So we'll see, man. Yeah, interesting stuff. But uh, George, any final thoughts before we take off today? I, I just have to say, I mean, I'm so glad that they made these announcements uh, as far as like with the ticket pricing and the tiering. So we know which way we're doing it, because once again, I said it before and I'll say it again. The OG 55 crew is going to be at D23. We will be on location. So please, if you are attending the event, you're going to be in the area at Disneyland, whatever. Definitely uh, keep an eye out for us. You know, come over, say hi, you know. Yeah. Because we're also going to be having our very first OG 55 uh, meetup uh, uh, at the downtown Disney area, which we still are in uh, talks of like all the logistics behind it, which we will announce those plans um, at a later date. Yeah, like in its own like video. So everyone yeah. can be aware of it. And I'll share it on Twitter and all that, too. So, yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. Um, I, I just want to say, though, OK, so those prices, those in crazy prices for some of those tickets, bro. They should include like a park ticket or some crap in that price. So that's insane. Yeah. Like like twenty five hundred dollars, nine hundred ninety nine dollars. Like I don't care where you're sitting. I want like either a park hopper ticket or something. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and 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 Scott Go <laughs> and Scott Gustin confirmed because someone actually asked him. He said, uh, "The person asking him said, are there any differences between why the price value is so high or is it just the seating arrangement? And he's just said it it's, it has, there's no additional perks to it. It's just all in where you sit. Wow. Now for me personally, and we talked about this today, George, I don't really need to be like front row. Yeah. Or then the same way. I, I, it's, it's the news that interests me. I don't need to see yes. like daddy Josh up close. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. The only, the only, uh, the only, <laughs> One actually that I would love to actually be up front would actually be the legend ceremony. Yeah. Like that's that one would be yeah. that one would be kind of cool. And possibly maybe the entertainment one because of uh, they're gonna have what they're saying they're gonna have um kind of Broadway style live performances. Um, but obviously we could still enjoy it from the comfort of our seats all the way up in peanut heaven, you know? And it's yeah. like, um, and then we could just like watch the extra stuff on the jumbotron. It's like, yeah, I don't have to pay over a thousand dollars and definitely not $2,600 oh. just to see, you know, the, um, the outline of Josh tomorrow's face. It's like, I got, I got better stuff to do with, uh, that extra, <laughs> yeah. with that extra moolah. I mean, don't well, get me, don't get me wrong. He's a sexy, he's a sexy guy, but I don't really, he's not really my type though. To be well, well, well a AOG, you know what though? Here's the thing. But if you're real close, you can have, you go on stage and then you guys compare whose hair gel stronger. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Daddy, Daddy Josh might lean over the stage and go, "Hey, bro, uh, what 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 product do you use?" You know. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me today, talking D twenty three Ultimate Fan Experience. George, <laughs> if you can let everybody at home know where they can find you on social media, sir. Absolutely, you can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You could also find me on Instagram under the Disney Italiano. And of course you'll find me here on my home base at orange Grove 55 with citrus corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. There it is. Mr. Sticky icky, the sticky icky man. <laughs> and then down below, we got our friendly neighborhood, Spider-Man, Mr. Michael Eva, Eva, if you can let everybody at home know where they can find you on social media, sir. Yes, sir. OG. Thank you so much for having me on. 
as always, and you people out there, you can find me on uh, Instagram, Michael Ebba, uh, Twitter, slash X, at Michael Ebba 1991 and then you can also find your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here on OG55, where I'm here saving the city, saving these two guys, but they also saved me. You know. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Gentlemen, you make it look so easy. There we go. There we go. Thank you all so, so much for watching this episode of Orange Grove Diddy Five. Until next time, everybody. Peace. <laughs>